Politicians around the world work overtime to attract foreign direct investment. Charming, schmoozing, making promises. The dream is that multinationals bring in new skills and ideas, create jobs and spur on local companies. But is all this effort, the phone calls, the dinners, the plane flights, the special tax breaks, really worth it? Is the impact of foreign investment always what policymakers assume it's going to be? Our research has gone beyond anecdotal evidence by looking at the impact of tens of thousands of investments all over the world, and we found that foreign investments do have an impact on receiving regions. But there are some very widely held assumptions that turn out not to be right at all. First is the idea that some of the best investors you can attract are the big tech giants, like Microsoft, Google, and so on. By many measures, these are the largest companies on Earth. They're also growing quickly and should help provide your city and region with highly productive 21st century technologies, know-how and skills that your region needs to compete globally in the future. While we do find that an era becomes more innovative after multinationals move in, actually the Microsofts and Googles can end up being far from ideal as local partners. That is because these huge firms are more capable than others in keeping their knowledge and new ideas in-house so that Google Campus runs the risk of becoming a Google enclave. Moreover, tech giants are less likely to hire local workers or send former employees back into the rest of the job market. They collaborate less with the local firms and they are less likely to demonstrate their ideas and innovation and share them with the local economy. Instead, medium-sized, innovative multinationals are most likely to boost regional innovation. The second-tier players might be the best partners to facilitate regional innovation and should be given more attention by policymakers. A second misconception we discovered is that the commonly held notion that foreign investment is a great way to get out of a recession. In other words, when firms in your own country tend not to be investing, getting money in from abroad is the answer. Looking at European regions coming out of the Great Recession, we found that this is only partially true. The areas which received the most FDI recovered the quickest, but this only really holds when new investments are flowing into the industries that are already strong in the host economy, rather than encouraging a whole new industry to set up. Moreover, investment in services are especially important to facilitate regional recovery. The third misconception is that it is always better for the region when multinationals come and invest in something new, for example by setting up a brand new factory, than when the multinationals buys a pre-existing factory. Sometimes this is even seen as stealing an industry and siphoning the profits out of the country. We compared regions in Mexico, Brazil and Colombia, which are three massive hubs for exporting into the US and the rest of Latin America. But only in two of these, Brazil and Mexico, we did find that investment in brand new activities is actually helping local innovation. Instead, in Colombia, where technological development and global integration of many areas are less advanced, Multinationals buying up existing local firms are more effective at encouraging innovation in the local regions. The fourth and final misconception is that the country benefits not just from inward FDI, but also keeping its own investment onshore. In the US, for instance, city regions with more firms which expand abroad actually become even more innovative. If East Coast companies can expand to India, the city regions where they are based gain more than if they had gone to Ohio instead, for example. By traveling farther abroad, instead of being trapped on shore, they can cast as wide a net as possible to find new ideas. Unfortunately, these four misconceptions are only growing in credence in many parts of the world. And you don't have to look far to find the government chasing after investment from the tech giants or declaring war on companies that offshore. For that reason, it is more important than ever that policymakers take an empirical, data-driven approach to these issues. Our research offers a new opportunity for governments everywhere to look at the facts and, where necessary, think again to their strategies.